The first thing I want to go over is this example two. And we're going to calculate stress increase due to this surface rectangular loading. This example here, this is three by two. That's the size of the original rectangular load, load at the surface. But point A here, this is actually outside that area. And the depth of this point is four meters, Z of four. And to solve this, if we want to use the solution from case number one, we have to put A at the corner of the surface rectangular load. And for this case, the way to do this is we're going to basically construct a larger rectangle. So that's four by two. So I call this rectang rectangle one. And the corresponding influence factor I3, just call this I3 one. So we construct it such that point A prime is below the corner of this large rectangle. And if you compare this re larger rectangle with the original one, you notice we added uh, extra one times two smaller rectangle. So you have to basically subtract these additional ones from the larger one. So this, let's call this rectangle number two. And the influence factor I3 of two. Then the increase of vertical stress at point A or A prime is basically the increase due to the large rectangle we call sigma Z1 minus that additional smaller area we added on. So that's how you get the stress increase due to the original rectangle, that two by three rectangle. So that's our strategy. And then let's look at how do we get these values here. So again, this is rectangle one and rectangle two. So for rectangle one, it's a two by four rectangle. The dimension of the rest, re, uh, this rectangle B is two meter. L, the length is four meter. The depth Z of that point A prime, this is four meter. And then to get the uh, influence factor I3, we need M and N value. So M is B over Z. And the N value is L over Z. And then we can use that table 10.10 .10 to find I3 value. So this is that table 10.10. .10. It's a variation of Y3 with M and M. So we have M of 0.5 in N value of 1.0. Then the corresponding I3 value, 0.1202. So that's the I3 value for this large rectangle. Then the stress increase at point A prime due to this large rectangle one is Q, which is a surface pressure times I3. So that's 150, that's given. That's a surface pressure times 0 0.1202, 18.03 kilonewton per meter squared. So that's a stress increase due to the large rectangle one. And then for rectangle two, this is a smaller one, one times two. The B value is one. And um, L value is two. And again, Z is four. So for rectangle two, M is B over Z. So that's 0.25. And N value, L over Z, 0.5. Again, you can use that table 10.10 .10 to find the influence factor. So from table 10.10. .10. And for this value, for this combination, if you look at this table, we don't have actually M value of 0.25. So we have to use linear interpolation. So we have for N of 0.5, we have M equals 0.2, the I3 is 0.0387 and M of 0.3, the I3 value is 0.0559. Then 
the uh, I three value for m of 0.25, we can use simple interpolation for n equals 0.5, m equals 0.2. We have I three, let's call this 2a is 0 0.0387. In n of 0.5, m 0.3, I three, let's call this 2b is 0.055. And use simple interpolation, you can get the I3 value for N of 0.5 and M of 0.25. So this value is 0.0473. And then the stress increase delta sigma Z2, 150 times 0.0473. And this value is 7.095. Once you have all these two values, then the final that stress increase due to the original rectangle is the difference between these two. So 18.03 minus 7.095. So that's 10.93 kilonewton per meter square. So that is the stress increase due to the original rectangle. So the difference between these two rectangles. So that should conclude chapter 10, stress distribution. So we went over basically two scenarios. One is stress increase due to point load, and the second one is stress increase due to rectangular loads. And for all the other shapes, the, the method to solve this stress distribution problem is very similar. So just surface pressure times an influence factor, which is a function of the geometry of the surface loads and the depth of the point.